humans don't start the thinking from scratch every second as you're listening to my words you understand each word based on your understanding of the previous words you don't throw away everything and start thinking from scratch again your thoughts have persistence traditional neural network can't do this and it seems like a major shortcoming for example if you want to classify what kind of event is happening at every point in a movie it's unclear how a traditional neural network could use its reasoning about previous events in the film to inform later ones recurrent neural network addresses this issue they are networks with loops in them allowing information to persist in the given diagram a chunk of neural network a looks at some input xt and outputs a value hd a loop allows information to be passed from one step of the network to the next these loops make recurrent neural networks seem kind of mysterious however if you think a bit more it turns out that they aren't all that different than a normal neural network our recurrent neural network can be thought of as multiple copies of the same network each passing a message to a successor consider what happens if we unroll this loop the chain like nature reveals that recurrent neural networks are intimately related to sequences and lists they are natural architecture of neural network to use for such data and they certainly are used in the last few years there have been incredible success applying rnns to a variety of problems like speech recognition language modeling translation image captioning and the list goes on essential to this success is the use of lstms a very special kind of recurrent neural network which works for many tasks much much better than the standard version almost all exciting results based on the recurrent neural network are achieved with them it's these lstms that we'll try to explain in this video one of the appeals of rnn is the idea that they might be able to connect previous information to the present task such as using previous video frames might inform the understanding of the present frame if rnns could do this they would be extremely useful but can they well it depends sometimes we only need to look at recent information to perform the present task for example consider a language model trying to predict the next word based on the previous ones if you are trying to predict the last word in the sentence the clouds are in the sky we don't need any further context it's pretty obvious that the next word is going to be the sky in such cases where the gap between the relevant information and the place that it's needed is small rnns can learn to use the past information but there are also cases where we need more context consider trying to predict the last word in the text i grew up in france i speak fluent dot 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 Recent information suggests that the next word is probably the name of the language but if we want to narrow down which language we need the context of France from further back it's entirely possible for the gap between the relevant information and the point where it is needed to become very large unfortunately as that gap grows rnns become unable to learn to connect the information in theory rnns are absolutely capable of handling such long term dependencies A human could carefully pick parameters for them to solve toy problems of this form. Sadly, in practice, RNN don't seem to be able to learn them. But thankfully, LSTMs don't have this problem. LSTM, a short form of long short term memory networks, usually just called LSTMs, are a special kind of RNN, capable of learning long term dependencies. They work tremendously well on a large variety of problems and are now widely used. LSTMs are explicitly designed to avoid the long term dependency problem. Remembering information for longer periods of time is practically their default behavior, not something they struggle to learn with. All recurrent neural networks have the form of a chain of repeating modules of neural network. In standard RNNs, this repeating module will have a very simple structure such as a single tanh layer. LSTMs also have this chain like structure. But the repeating module has a different structure. instead of having a single neural network there are four interacting in a very special way in the given diagram each line carries an entire vector from the output of one node to the input if input of the other the pink circle represents point wise operations like vector addition while the yellow boxes are learned neural network layers lines merging denote concatenation while a line forking denote its content being copied and the copies going to different locations the key to lstm is the cell state the horizontal line going through the top of the diagram the cell state is a kind of a conveyor belt it runs straight down the entire chain with only some minor linear interactions it's very easy for information to just flow along it unchanged the lstm does have the ability to remove or add information to the cell carefully regulated by 
structures called gates. Gates are a way to optionally let information through. They are composed out of sigmoid neural net layer and a pointwise multiplication operation. The sigmoid layer outputs number between 0 and 1 describing how much of each component should be let through. A value of 0 means let nothing through while a value of 1 means let everything through. An LSTM has three of these gates to protect and control the cell state. The first step in our LSTM is to decide what information we are going to throw away from the cell state. This decision is made by a sigmoid layer called the forget gate layer. It looks at HT-1 and XT and outputs a number between 0 and 1 for each number in the cell state CT-1. A 1 represents completely keep this while a 0 represents completely get rid of this. Let's get back to our example of language model trying to predict the next word based on all the previous ones. In such a problem, uh, the cell state might include the gender of the present subject so that the correct pronouns can be used. When we see a new subject, we want to forget the gender of the old subject. The next step is to decide what information we are going to store in the cell state. This has two parts. First, a sigmoid layer called the input gate layer decides which value will update. Next, a tan h layer creates a vector of these new candidates she has t that could be added to the state. In the next step, we'll combine these two to create an update to the state. In the example of our language model, we would want to add the gender of the new subject to the cell state to replace the old ones we're forgetting. It's now time to update the old cell state CT-1 into a new cell state CT. The previous steps already decided what to do. We just need to actually do it. We multiply the old state by FT, forgetting the things we decided to forget earlier. Then we add IT into CT hash. This is the new candidate value scaled by how much we decided to update each state value. In the case of the language model, this is where we would actually drop the information about the old subject gender and add the new information as we decided in the previous steps. Finally, we need to decide what we are going to output. This output will be based on our cell state but will be a filtered version. First, we run a sigmoid layer which decides what part of the cell state we are going to output. Then we put the cell state through tan h to push the values to be between minus 1 and 1 and multiply it by the output of the sigmoid gate so that we only output the parts we, we decided to. For the language model example, since it just saw a subject, it might want to output information relevant to a verb in case that's what is coming next. For example, it might output whether the subject is singular or plural so that we know what form of a verb should be conjugated into if that's what following next. What we've talked about is a pretty normal LSTM. But not all LSTMs are the same as we've discussed. In fact, it seems like almost every paper involving LSTM uses a slightly different version. The differences are minor, but it's worth mentioning some of them. One popular LSTM variant is adding peephole connections. This means that we let the gate layers look at the cell state. In the given diagram, we see peepholes being added to all the gates, but many papers uh, will give peepholes to some to some gates and not others. Another variation is to use coupled forget and input gates. Instead of separately deciding what to forget and what we should add new information to, we make those decisions together. We only forget when we are going to input something in its place. We only input new values to the cell or to the state when we forget something older. A slightly more dramatic version of the LSTM is the gated recurrent unit or the GRU. It combines the forget and input gate into a single update gate. It also merges the cell state and hidden state and makes some other changes. The resulting model is pretty simpler than standard LSTM models and has been growing increasingly popular. These are a few of the notable LSTM variants. There are a lot of others. Uh, there's also some completely different approach to tackling long-term dependencies like clockwise RNNs. So which of these variants is the best? Do the differences matter? Well, there's some academic research that has tested more than 10,000 RNN architectures finding some that work better than LSTM on certain tasks. Concluding this video, LSTMs were a big step in what we can accomplish with RNNs. It's natural to wonder, is there another big step? A common opinion among researchers is yes, there's a next step and it's attention. 
The idea is to let every step of an RNN pick information to look at for some larger collection of information. For example, if you are using an RNN uh, to create a caption describing an image, it might pick a part of an image to look at for every word it outputs. Attention isn't the only exciting thread in RNN research. For example, grid LSTMs seem extremely promising. Work using RNNs in generative models also seems also seem very interesting.